My Move University YouTube videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. If you'd like to pay for the use of the videos, visit my website at moveuniversity.com, click on the pay what you like link at the top of the page, and follow the instructions on that page. Thank you and enjoy. So previously we've talked about fatty acid metabolism and how we can break these fatty acids down for energy. And before we did that, we actually have to activate fatty acids to, these, to their activated form called acyl-CoAs. And the, the enzyme that did that was called acyl-CoA synthetase, and we added a coenzyme A, and we, that required two ATP equivalents. And we talked about that in the previous video. Where does this process actually occur, though? This occurs in the cytosol of a cell. Now, where are these acyl-CoAs actually broken down? Well, they're broken down via beta oxidation, and we know that beta oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. So we, if that's the case, then these acyl-CoAs, upon activation, have to somehow get into the mitochondrial matrix. And mitochondria are cellular or are membrane-bound organelles, excuse me. And specifically, they have two membranes. They have an outer membrane and an inner membrane. So membranes in general are selectively permeable. So how do these acyl-CoAs actually get into the mitochondrial matrix to be broken down via beta-oxidation? Well, the answer is in this title up here, carnitine-mediated transport of acyl-CoA. And I don't want to write that all over again just for time, so see title. So what is carnitine and how does it work in this sort of process? Well, carnitine is this molecule right here that I've drawn. This is carnitine an amino acid because it has an amino group here and a carboxylic acid. It's not an alpha amino acid uh, like the ones that we've learned before, uh, but it is an amino acid by definition because it has an amino group and a carboxylic acid group. So what actually needs to happen is this this acyl portion of the acyl CoA needs to be attached to the hydroxyl portion, this hydroxyl group of carnitine to yield this molecule. And this molecule is called, creatively enough, acylcarnitine. So this acylcarnitine, once it's created, can actually be transported into the mitochondria. So in this process of, of taking this acyl group, attaching it to this carnitine, and this coenzyme A falling off, we've created this acylcarnitine. And this process is catalyzed by an enzyme called carnitine acyltransferase. That should make sense, right? We're transferring an acyl group an acyl group from acyl-CoA onto carnitine. Specifically, it's carnitine acyltransferase 1. And we'll see that there's another one later. It can also be called carnitine palmitoyl transferase 1, or CPT1, while this one's called CAT1 or CAT1. And I prefer to use the acyl transferase instead of palmitoyl transferase, and the reason why is because this can be any acyl-CoA. Palmitoyl refers specifically to a 16-carbon saturated fatty acyl-CoA. So um, I like to use acyl transferase 1, even though this name works just as well. So now that we have this acyl carnitine, uh, this thing can be transported into the mitochondria. So let's take a look at that, how that works. Now. There's a little bit of uncertainty here among, among scientists about exactly what happens. Now, this carnitine acyltransferase 1 that I just mentioned, that enzyme is embedded in the outer mitochondrial membrane. So I've drawn it here, and I've drawn it here. You might be wondering why I drew it twice. The reason why is because there is initially acyl-CoA in the cytoplasm. Now, we know that that acyl-CoA has to be, or the acyl group of that acyl-CoA needs to be attached to carnitine to make acyl-carnitine. Uh, as we just saw previously. But it is unclear to scientists whether or not that happens outside in the cytoplasm or on the intermembrane space side. So that's why I've drawn this gigantic OR here. So either either this happens, this left side happens, or this right side happens. But we'll see that it's uh, either way, we'll still be able to understand this pathway. So um, scenario one, right? Acyl-CoA and the carnitine will come together and form acyl-carnitine, uh, where the catalyzed reaction occurs on the cytoplasmic side of the outer membrane, of the outer mitochondrial membrane, still catalyzed by cat, uh, CAT1. So we'll get this acyl-carnitine, and this acyl-carnitine can come in through uh, a channel protein or a, a, a pore that, that 
allows it to come through. Uh, and then we have acylcarnitine in the intermembrane space. Either that happens, or instead of that happening, acyl-CoA comes right through the pore and then joins carnitine and becomes acylcarnitine, and that reaction is catalyzed on the intermembrane space side of the outer mitochondrial membrane. Notice that in either case, we get acylcarnitine in the intermembrane space. So this or here is just because scientists aren't exactly sure, at least as far as I know, about which one actually happens. But the point is, though, that either way we get acylcarnitine in the intermembrane space. So when, once we have acylcarnitine in the intermembrane space, what's going to happen? This acylcarnitine has to go from the intermembrane space across the inner mitochondrial membrane into the matrix. So what allows that to happen? Well, there's this transporter enzyme that's abbreviated CACT here, and that stands for carnitine, carnitine, acylcarnitine, translocase. So what that thing does is it can take the acylcarnitines from the intermembrane space and transport them across into the mitochondrial matrix. So now that we have this acylcarnitine back in the mitochondrial matrix, all we need to do is split it back off to yield our acyl-CoA. So what happens is we're going we're gonna to attach a coenzyme A to this acylcarnitine so that we can get back an acyl-CoA and carnitine. So what catalyzes this reaction? Well, before we had uh, CAT1, this one is CAT2. So that, of course, stands for carnitine acyl transferase 2, or you can put CPT2, right, carnitine palmitoyl transferase 2. Um, that catalyzes this reaction. So now we've regenerated this acyl-CoA back on the mitochondrial matrix side of things, right? We just effectively carried the acyl group. We've carried the acyl group from the cytoplasm, right, across the, mito the outer mitochondrial membrane, and into the mitochondrial matrix. And now, once it's in the mitochondrial matrix, what can happen? Well, that process that we talked about earlier, right? Beta oxidation. So that can occur. Now, what can happen is once this carnitine and acyl-CoA are regenerated, of course, the acyl-CoA, as we just mentioned, goes to beta oxidation. But this carnitine can be translocated back across into the intermembrane space. And depending on which scenario actually happens, right, it can either... Um, uh, join another acyl-CoA and just be turned into a acyl-carnitine on the intermembrane space side, or if this process happens and this carnitine will go back out into the cytoplasm and uh, join with another acyl-CoA, become acyl-carnitine and come back into the intermembrane space so that this process can all happen again. So I hope this name makes sense for this for this uh, translocase, carnitine acyl-carnitine translocase, because it translocates both of these molecules. It brings acylcarnitine into the mitochondrial matrix and kicks out these carnitines back out so that they can join with another acyl-CoA to make another acylcarnitine. So essentially what we're doing, essentially, is we're just taking the acyl-CoAs from the cytoplasm and bringing them over here in the mitochondrial matrix where they can go undergo beta oxidation. Now this process in particular, transporting these acyl-CoAs across into the mitochondrial matrix, this process is rate-limiting. for beta oxidation. And what do I mean by that? Well, it determines how fast beta oxidation can actually occur. And the reason why is because the mitochondria can only oxidize as much acyl-CoA as there is available in the matrix to oxidize. So the enzymes of beta oxidation are in the mitochondrial matrix. And if there's acyl-CoA is available, it's going to act on them. But the, the process of beta oxidation is only going to happen as fast as the availability of acyl-CoAs allows for. So if this transport system, if this transport system continually transport acyl, transports acyl-CoAs into the mitochondrial matrix, then beta oxidation will happen more often. If it's transporting them a little bit slower, then beta oxidation can only move as fast as this transport system allows. Okay? So we mentioned before previously in the enzyme videos about enzyme regulation is that regulated enzymes are either the uh, 
enzymes that catalyze the first committed step of a pathway, or they catalyze an irreversible reaction, or they catalyze the uh, rate-limiting step. And in this case, this process, like the transporting the acyl-CoAs into the mitochondrial matrix from the cytoplasm, is rate-limiting for the pathway of beta-oxidation. So if this process is rate-limiting, then it must be regulated. And it is. So let's talk a little bit about that. So the regulation of fatty acid oxidation, right, specifically beta oxidation. The regulated protein or enzyme is um, the carnitine acyl transferase 1, right, CAT1. So CAT1, you'll notice, is really the first role player in this pathway, right? It's it's the the first enzyme that you know creates this acyl carnitine. So every other role player comes later, right? The the translocase comes after it, and uh, Cat two comes after it. So it makes sense that the first one is going to be regulated. Now I'm going to tell you the the molecule that regulates this enzyme's activity is malonyl CoA. Now, I don't think we've talked about malonyl-CoA much, um, but we will in the future with fatty acid synthesis. Specifically, malonyl-CoA is the molecule that's committed to fatty acid synthesis. Now, knowing that, what do you think will happen to Cat1 if malonyl-CoA, the molecule committed to fatty acid synthesis, is the molecule that regulates this thing's activity? How do you think malonyl-CoA will affect carnitine acyl transferase 1? Well, if malonyl-CoA is the molecule committed to fatty acid synthesis, and this CAT1 is involved in getting fatty acids to be broken down, then malonyl-CoA must inhibit carnitine acyl transferase 1. And that should make sense. Why does that make sense? Well, we shouldn't have fatty acid breakdown and fatty acid synthesis happening in the same cell at the same time. If malonyl-CoA is committing to fatty acid synthesis, we want fatty acid synthesis to occur, not fatty acid breakdown. If we want fatty acid breakdown to occur, we don't want fatty acid synthesis to occur. So if malonyl-CoA is available and that's the committed molecule to fatty acid synthesis, that's definitely going to stop fatty acid breakdown from occurring and it stops it by inhibiting by inhibiting this enzyme right here from even creating these acyl carnitines. So I hope you found that video helpful in kind of understanding um, the carnitine uh, mediated transport of acyl coas. Uh, thank you for watching.